as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, not an office any of us sought, but not an office any of us would reject. And like Peter and James and John of old, uh, we leave our nets and walk away and devote the rest of our lives to this work. Hi everyone, Nemo here. Gary E. Stevenson, contrary to what Elder Holland just said, has been allowed to stay on the corporate board of iFit Health and Fitness, and his stocks in that company are worth $911 million, almost $1 billion. The scriptures speak of a rich young ruler who ran to Jesus, knelt at his feet, and with genuine sincerity asked the master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? After reviewing a long list of commandments this fellow had faithfully kept, Jesus told the man to sell all his belongings, give the proceedings to the poor, take up his cross, and follow him. The boldness of this directive caused the young ruler, in spite of his expensive sandals, to get cold feet, and he went away sorrowing because, the scripture says, he had great possessions. So what's going on here? Matthew 23 says you can't serve God and money. It's one thing to benefit off the hard work he put in as a businessman building a company, but if that is tied in some way to him still serving money by serving as a board member of the company, that's hardly leaving his net, as Elder Holland put it. And looking at things more broadly, even if they aren't involved in a previous company or such, the base living allowance for general authorities in the LDS church is at least $120,000 a year as of 2014 which makes the following pretty shocking. Is it a bad idea to get married before you have a good amount of savings in the bank? You and Derek didn't have any money in the bank. <laughs> you we don't have any money now. We don't have any money now. <laughs> Bonnie H. Corden's dad, Harold G. Hillam, was a mission president shortly before they were married and would go on to be a general authority as a member of the Presidency of the Seventy and General Sunday School President. When we consider Bonnie attended BYU and the children of mission presidents get free schooling there, when she was talking about having no money as a newlywed, she had no student debt and was only a phone call away from typical general authority financial help. So trying to appeal as broke newlyweds as if she was helplessly poor, despite living in the US where, if all else failed, government programs could help, doesn't really paint the whole picture. Let us also not forget she's talking to the YSA in West Africa, so she certainly was not poor by the standards of her audience. And this strikes me as very insensitive. This is the West Africa area. It includes 17 countries, the average wage across all of them being $1,144.38 a year. The highest average annual wage is $2,340 in Ghana. The lowest annual wage is $550 a year in Niger. In the best case scenario, Ghana, where you adjust for purchasing power, the average person in Ghana is paid $5,470 gross wage. So even as a poor newlywed in the United States, it's likely she had more money a month than some of these people have in a year. So that line about we don't money now. <laughs> doesn't hold up either. Bonnie H. Corden started her own business and was a working mother before that, contributing to pensions and likely still receiving dividends from her business. She lives in what is clearly a decent sized home, according to her Instagram feed. Also, if you look up her husband on LinkedIn, You'll see that he's in a job that typically nets you $166,000 a year. This is 145 times the average wage of the Africa West region. He potentially earns in one year what it would take the average person in that region 145 years to earn. If Sister Holland and I had waited till we had money, we still wouldn't be married. <laughs> and we've been married for 58 years. I'd, I'd have lost 58 good years uh, if we waited for any money. Uh, don't, the, you need to worry about some things, but you shouldn't worry too much about money. Uh, you, you need to be honorable. You need to be able to be responsible and, and keep food on the table and pay your bills, but you don't need much. You don't need much to live on. Remember, Elder Holland is earning at least $120,000 a year. I can't conceive of how he views this as not having any money, particularly when he's speaking to YSA in West Africa. Maybe it's because he feels the need to prop up the narrative that the church has no paid ministry. Minister Gizzi and I visited on a number of subjects, 
including our worldwide building program. He then asked, why is your church so wealthy that you can afford to build buildings in our country throughout the world? How do you get your money? I answered that the church is not wealthy, but that we follow the ancient biblical principle of tithing, which principle is re-emphasized in our modern scripture. I explained also that our church has no paid ministry. But this is simply not the case. If you do the maths, there are 117 general authorities, if you exclude general officers. Each of these is paid at least $120,000. The church annually spends $14,040,000 minimum on paying its top leadership. So next time someone says, we have no professionally trained and salaried clergy in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Just remember, the top leaders of the church are paid very well.